Good morning everyone. I'm um, going live just a little bit early this morning just because um do something a little bit different. I'm out uh, in the woods today and I'm on my phone so not quite the normal setup. If you've been tuning in um, over the last couple of weeks doing our lives mostly we've been doing this from home and in our back garden so um, but today I'm out in the woods so I'm on a completely different setup. I don't have the uh, fancy screen to tell you that we're coming on live um, so I've just popped on a little bit early so I think what we'll do is just as usual we'll um, we'll give it two or three minutes just to let people join in and arrive maybe about five past ten we'll start the nature walk so a little bit different today we're um, you won't really need much to join in today I just uh, today is just a nature walk I'm out in the woods and I wanted to just do something a little bit different um, the weather's nice and I just thought we would would get out and we'd bring a little bit of nature um, into people's living rooms into your bedroom into your garden wherever you might be just now and just to try and give a little bit of inspiration about um, you know what kind of nature we've got in the UK and um, what kind of things you can get out and see on really simple and easy walks if you're fortunate enough to be able to do that so that's uh, that's what today is going to be about so like I say we'll do four or five minutes of just letting people um, join in I'm just going to add my messages on I should should be able to get messages um, coming in again this is a new system for me so I'm hoping if anybody was to write me a question or if you wanted a shout out there we are. Good morning from Theo in Newark. Again, hi there. So yeah, so message uh, the message situation this morning is exactly the same. If you want to send a message, if you want to, um, you want me to do a shout out. Can William have William have a shout out? Hi there, William. It's exactly the same. Um, I just don't see quite as many messages at the same time on my phone as I do on the computer. So just bear with me. I'll try and get through as many messages uh, and shout outs as I possibly can. And. Um, if you've got, while we're waiting, if you've got any bushcraft related questions, um, somebody, the, the Ruddler says, few didn't think it was on today. Well, here I am, um, and I'm fortunate because it's a beautiful day. Uh, the sun is shining here in Cheshire, and I've got snow on the ground, so that's gonna make it lovely for tracking. Hi from Dan and Matt in Yorkshire. Hi to you guys, thanks for joining in. And yeah, like I was saying, if anybody's got any bushcraft related questions, nature related questions, anything you've seen the last couple of weeks us do, just fire them over to me. I'll do my best to answer things while we wait. Hi Stephen, could you say happy birthday to Mum Sarah? And my message disappeared before I could see the end name, but they are happy birthday to you, Sarah. And uh, can, let me see, Ben Ireland have a shout, shout out, loving the videos, age seven Gloucester. Well, I'm glad. Oh, there, my message popped back up. Thanks from Edith. So thanks to you, Edith, for that previous message. And uh, can you say hi to Corey and Max? Hi from uh, a very cold um, English woodland this morning. There's frost on the ground, plenty of ice in the puddles, um, but it's a beautiful crisp day. And uh, I've warmed my hands up with gloves on the way here on the walk this morning from, from my house. And uh, hopefully they'll stay warm enough to be able to hold this phone for the next half an hour. Bain, age 12 in Staffordshire. Hello to you. Thanks for joining in. And... Uh, if I missed any messages, if I can see any more. No, not quite. So yeah, like I was saying, if you've just joined, the, the plan for this morning's uh, session, you don't really need much to join in. You just need a little bit of interest, a little bit of enthusiasm for British nature. We're going to go on just a little bit of a nature walk. But this morning's focus, I want to talk about badgers. Um, just because I'm very fortunate, I can walk out the back of my house, across a couple of fields, and I end up in uh, a very small piece of woodland. Um, but it does have an active badger set, which I discovered not that long ago. So I wanted to take you over to it and have a little bit of a chat about badgers. A little bit about how I know it's a badger set. So we'll look a little bit into tracking. And uh, the set is about 150 metres from here. But on the way there, there's a couple of other things I want to show you along the way. And uh, as usual, we'll do, I'll do as many questions and shout outs uh, as I possibly can if anyone's got any bushcraft. Uh, questions or anything I'll do my best to answer them and if you've got any questions just make sure you they will pop up on my screen but they are a little bit slower than they are normally on the computer so let's see what time we've been on good morning Stephen from Japan wow from Japan so I've um, I've never been to Japan so I don't know an awful lot about Japan's wildlife but I hear that it has some amazing natural history I was in China um, last year and uh, it was fantastic because um, one of the locations I went to in the north, which is not too far from Japan, a place called uh, Changbai, 
the wildlife there was very similar to the UK, so I recognised lots of the tracks that I could see from the animals and um, you know, lots of foxes and all kinds of what you might class as um, quite classically British animals. So that was really interesting and I recognised a lot of the trees. So Morning from Phil, Reuben and Josh in a frosty Cheshire. Well, hi, you're down the road, you know exactly what weather I've got. And um, let me see how I work this. Hi from Primrose, age four in Norfolk. Henry, JJ from London. Hi to you guys. Right, I think what we'll do is we'll get started. So bear with me as I uh, try to... Hello from Germany. So here I am, I'm in a birch woodland in uh, Cheshire, in England, and uh, it doesn't have, it has, well, yeah, it has plenty of wildlife species represented here. It doesn't have everything, but it has just enough to be able to get under the skin of it. So what I thought, what I'll do is I'll switch the camera around back and forward between looking at me and then looking at what I'm looking at on the ground. And uh, as I walk through the woods, I just want to show you a few things. And if you've got any questions, you know, remember always to ask them. So before we look at um, badgers, I'm going to look at a badger set. I wanted to have a look at something you might confuse a badger set for, and I'm going to spin the camera around now and have a look here. So, what we've got here are lots of lovely tracks in the snow, and these are the tracks of a rabbit. And uh, the reason I'm saying you might confuse this for a badger set, because both, both animals will actually spend, um, they, they live underground in different, different types of homes, and this is a rabbit's home, and it's called a warren. And, uh, I keep saying badger set, and I should say that badger set, that's the word we use to describe a badger's home. It's called a set. And this is a rabbit warren, and I know it's a rabbit warren, first of all, because the hole is quite small. You can see that my hand is about the size of the hole, so a badger wouldn't fit in there. A badger's much too big, and actually a fox would really struggle to fit in there as well, because foxes also have underground homes, and those are called an earth, that's what we call a fox's house, it's called an earth. But if I needed any more clues to the fact this was a rabbit house, I've got all of these tracks leading. So let's just have a look at these. How do I know that this is a rabbit? Well, there's my hand for scale. But what you can see here is this classic rabbit pattern. We've got single track, single track, and then we've got two next to each other, and that's very typical. And this is a front foot that comes down and this is a front foot that comes down, and then the two rear feet, the hinds, they land in front of the fronts. So actually, this animal is pushing its back legs right in front, and that's what gives it the ability to be quite fast. Oh, there's a message from Latvia, hi to you. Um, so that's the classic pattern you're looking for. So sometimes people can get a bit confused because these are the back feet, and these are the front feet, and you would think the animal was going this way, but it isn't. It's actually traveling this way so you have to just know that little piece of knowledge that the fronts come down and then the hinds in front and it's traveling and the distance between these patterns of four can vary quite a lot and you can see there's not much distance between these two here and that tells me that the animal's moving quite slowly and uh, as we walk we might find some examples of where these uh, groups of four are much further apart and that would tell me um, that the animal's moving much faster so there's a lot of activity happened in the night here into this hole and another thing you'll often see um, around rabbit trails, and here's a great example of it here, is this sort of staining in the snow. You can see lots of these little drips, and they're often a browny all orange color. And that tells me, and that's rabbit pee, and that's very classic when you see lots of rabbit activity. You'll see areas where they've stopped and had a little bit of a pee, and there's plenty of it. And there's a nice fresh dig. You can tell that that's obviously been dug um, in the night because uh, the snow fell yesterday. And so it's been dug in the night and that animal's probably looking for some food or sometimes they'll do a bit of digging if they're going to um, do a poo on top of there because that's how they actually use it. They use those um, marks for scent marking. There's more of the rabbit pee you can see there and that's typical. So that's rabbits. And uh, I'm gonna walk along here a little bit um, because there's lots of rabbit activity and I don't wanna spend too much time on them because I want to look at the badgers. But what I would say is, where you find rabbits, you also find foxes. And it's no surprise that when I come along here, there's a rabbit track crossing and going this way, you can see a perfect fox trail. And the difference between the fox trail and then now is we have just a single hole, a single hole, a single hole, a single hole, and a single hole. And that is a typical fox track. And actually what's happening here is you might think, wow, how can an animal move like that if it's got four legs? where you know where are the other feet and what's happening is 
front foot comes down into this hole and then it moves on and then the back leg, the back foot lands in exactly the same hole. So this is actually two tracks, two prints. And this is two prints and this is two prints and they're in a perfect straight line. And uh, the distance between them there is about the length of my forearm. I can't really quite show you that with my holding the camera at the same time, but that's a fox trail. And that's quite different to a dog trail because a lot of times what dogs do is they meander all over the place. They're not very energy efficient. They're much more um, lively and inquisitive and don't worry so much about traveling anywhere in a perfect straight line. Whereas a fox is very conservative with its energy. It wants to make sure that it keeps as much energy for what it needs to do as possible. So it walks everywhere in a straight line. So that's a really good way to tell that that's a fox. There's lots of other ways. Are any of the rabbit's senses better than ours is a question from a bud. Um, well, that's a very difficult question because I'm not, I'm not a rabbit and I'm not able to tell, but they do have some incredibly good senses. I would say that their hearing, um, with the size of those ears in relation to their body, um, they would have much better hearing uh, per se than us. And actually it's difficult to get close to rabbits sometimes because their hearing is so good. They've also got a very good sense of smell and uh, they can sense quite a lot with those whiskers of theirs. So I would say that their sense of smell would be better than ours. And you think about it, that's probably, uh, that makes a lot of sense because, you know, they, we, we don't need our sense of smell quite as much as they do. They need to be able to smell out roots and food and um, also they communicate using scent marking. So they, they're able to do that. So what I've done is I've just, we'll leave the foxes and the rabbits over there and we'll start working our way down towards um, the badger set. Now, this is a quite a well-used path I'm on here. And uh, I discovered this badger set because I'm quite inquisitive and I do follow little trails. And if I spin the camera around, you'll see that this is the walking path that a lot of the local people here come and they walk their dogs and you can see it's a really well used path. And uh, as I was coming down here with all my walk, and it's just round this corner, I, uh, I discovered, I discovered this. And uh, I looked off to my left and I saw that. Now that doesn't look like much. And I'm gonna show you what I'm looking at. You can see there. Now, animal tracking and nature observation is a real skill and you do have to develop it. But once you start to look for details in nature, you'll be able to see all kinds of things that you wouldn't normally be able to see. And uh, I know that that's not coming across great on camera, but you can see compared to this track, which is our dog walkers track, Hello from William from Norfolk. Hi to you. Um, this is different. This is different. It's much, much more subtle. It's difficult to see, but there is a very, again, not great on camera, but there is very much a trail here. But that tells me that that isn't a human that's walking on that because when humans walk on paths, they look like this. And when badgers or other animals walk on paths, they look like that. And the other thing is you'll see a lot of these brambles are still there. And uh, if I was a this was a human path most of those would have been trampled on and smashed and you wouldn't be able to walk you can see there's lots of things in the way and that's also telling me that you know what an animal can walk underneath that without destroying those whereas a human would flatten them so that's what I noticed and then I came through here and you'll see that this trail I don't know how easily you can see that maybe not so much but it's about it's quite wide it's um it's it's about a foot wide and if that was a fox we already looked at that fox's trail and we saw that it was very long and narrow and uh, not not they're not going to make this kind of what I would call a motorway anyway I'm rambling so I come I came down this path and I followed it and here's another good example of why this isn't a human trail because there's a big log in the way of the path and uh, you can see that the it's worn underneath the log and that tells me an animal's walking under it and not climbing over it like a human Anyway, so I came down here and I discovered this. And I'm just gonna get a better position to be able to show you. But here we are. This is what I found. There's a big hole over there with a lot of mud and dirt excavated all the way around. And then there's another great big hole here. And if I look around, I can find more holes. And there's another one. And that there is a badger set. So. I followed the trail and then I got to here. Now, how do I know that this is a badger's set? Well, there's a few things you want to look for because we looked at what a rabbit's warren looked like 
and a fox's earth is quite different and unfortunately I won't be able to show you a fox's home because uh, there isn't one very close to here for me to show you but I'll explain it as I do it but anyway this this hole here let's take a quick look at it first of all it's quite a characteristic shape it's quite wide you can see there that it's quite a big and you have to take my word for it that that there across the bottom of it, it's about a foot foot and a half wide it's quite large and it's also quite um, low if you think about the body of an animal a body of a badger it's a badger's kind of about you know 800 millimeters long you know if I if I held my hands out between my arm and my hand it's quite a big animal but it's also it's also um, very stocky very muscular and very quite low to the ground quite short legs and that hole kind of reflects the shape and body of the animal and that's how it might differ from a fox's hole as well because foxes are a completely different shape they're much taller legs much rounder body and that's what you would see in the hole but anyway so I saw that and that tells me straight away wow that looks like a badger um, set and also something to know about badgers is they change their bedding very often so the inside that hole I can see lots and lots of debris they're sort of leaves bracken small branches lots of uh, grassy materials and here although this is very frozen there's lots and lots of materials that are all loose I mean, look at the size of that piece there and that there is because badgers like to have nice dry bedding in there and what they'll do is not every night but most nights all year they'll actually change that bedding so they'll 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 take the old bedding out from inside of the uh, inside of the set They'll take the old, they'll take the old bedding out, and then they'll change it. And I've watched badgers many, many times. Um, if you sit in the evening, you can sit and watch them um, from a nice distance away. And I've seen them come out the hole. And sometimes I've watched them come out maybe 10 or 15 times over the space of a couple of hours. And I've read that they'll even do this 30 times a night. They'll they come out of the set dragging the old um, bedding. It's very strange to see if they actually walk backwards and kind of use their front um, front legs to hold the material as they shuffle backwards. Um, Abad does their mum tell them to do that? Uh, <laughs> it's normally the adults that will change the bedding, not the not the <laughs> not the younger ones. But yeah, I see where you're coming from. Yeah, probably there's a mummy badger in there, instructing the kids to uh, sort their bed out. But uh, but yeah, so they'll change their bedding and and uh, and they'll drag it from really far away. I mean, it's a very strange thing to watch, but you'll see them. They'll kind of take the old bedding, drag it nice and far away, and then they'll gather uh, bedding materials from quite a distance and they'll walk backwards. And it's a real funny thing to watch. So that's the next thing that told me that this is badger set. There's lots and lots of debris lying around. And then there's something else really interesting that's here. Uh, and another thing that tells me this is a badger set. And, and here we've got lots of little holes right next to where they're... they're uh... There's a very good question there. What time do they tend to come out overnight? We found a set and we'd love to see them. I'm going to cover that definitely because I know a lot of people um, would love to see a badger. And I can definitely help you, help you with that. And I'll get to that at the end, I think. But these holes here are what they call latrines. This is well, this is a latrine, and what badgers do, they do a very strange thing, where they actually um, they dig a little hole and then they poo inside that. Uh, and in the world of animal tracking, what we call poo is scat. That's the word that we use. We use the word scat. So what they do is they dig a little hole and they leave a scat inside there. And it's the only animal um, in the UK really that does that on any great scale. And if, if I could show you this you would be able to see inside the bottom of that hole is a scat. And uh, when you've got lots of them together, you know that that's a badger. And sometimes they'll do it right outside their homes, like this, um, where in, in this case there's probably five or six. And then they have territories which they'll range throughout the woods and you often find big, big latrine sites like that um, on the edge of where two family groups of badgers will actually um, meet and join. So that's another clue, another really good clue um, let's have a let's have a look at some other things. So then I started to get really down and dirty with this uh, badger set here. So I started looking. Now I get right down on my hands and knees. And this morning I was here for half an hour before I started with you guys, and um, I pulled these out. Now I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to try and pick one up. But on the underside of this log, which the badgers have to crawl underneath to get into the hole. Um, I found this, and it's a hair, but it's not like normal hairs. I'm going to put it on my hand. I'm going to just hopefully zoom in and show you that. There, 
And I hope you can see that, but that there, the very classic um, badger hair. You can see that it's black and it's got a white tip. And that was clinging to the underside of that log. And uh, there's also another one which is hard to see, but it's completely white and that's probably from the belly of the badger. And uh, so that's another really good clue that this is a badger set because I've got badger hairs. Now you won't find another hairs, you won't find another hair really in the UK that looks like that. You've got that black tip um, on the end of the hair and that's just classic. Also badger hair is very wiry. You can't bend it in half. And that's a good little test you can sometimes do with hair to work out what animal you have. Um, because deer hair is hollow, so you can bend that and it will kink in half. But badger hair, you can't do that with. It's very wiry and tough. And then, I don't know how easy this is going to be, but obviously finding a track is the best way to know for sure that this is a badger set. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but I'm going to try. And in the mud, in the soft mud, in just in the entrance of this hole here, you can see some perfect tracks. And uh, again, it might not be so easy to see, but I'm going to try and explain to you what I'm looking at. Well, here we have, this is the heel pad of the badger. That's the equivalent of your palm. If you hold your hand out and you do this as I'm doing this, you'll see that that's the big palm of the, of the badger. And there we have the toes. Now badgers have five toes on each of their four feet. And I'll point them out. This is the pinky. This is a ring finger. This is the middle finger. This is the index finger. This is your pointing finger. And then the thumb, you can't quite see very well because it's in the mud, but it's there somewhere. And um, that there, they're beautiful tracks. And there's quite a few on top of each other there. But uh, anywhere you see those toes in a nice straight line, those middle toes are really in a straight line, not like a dog or a cat. They're very different. And then um, you've got the thumb there. And people are asking questions, what do badgers eat? Well, badgers are omnivores. They're very classic omnivores, so they'll eat just about anything. And um, what they will eat lots of is earthworms. If they can eat earthworms, they'll eat just about nothing else. They absolutely love earthworms. So you'll see lots of digs when you see them digging up fields and sometimes people's gardens. That's usually what they're after. Um, but they won't just eat that. They'll also... They're not very good hunters. They don't have great eyesight. They have very good sense of smell and they have good hearing, but they don't have good eyesight. So they're not very good at hunting, but they will occasionally eat small mammals and birds if they come across young ones. Um, but they're not known for their hunting abilities, but they are a good forager. You know, they can find roots. They're, they're omnivores, so they won't just eat meat. They'll also eat um, vegetables. So um, roots and nuts and fruit and that kind of thing, earthworms and just about anything they can get their hands on. But earthworms really are their classic diet. And actually, when you look at the poo, when you look at the scat, if it looks black and sludgy when you look at it, it sounds a bit disgusting, but it is uh, something that you can definitely find. Uh, it's black and that's usually because they're eating a lot of earthworms. So that's another thing. So we've got the tracks, we've got the hair, we've got the changing of the bedding, we've got the shape of the hole. I'm already very convinced that this is the badger set. And then the last thing, which I thought I would show you, which if I can find it again, it's over here, which is really cool and not always easy to spot. Um, I'm going to spin the camera around again. I'm going to show you this. Now, this is an elder tree. Now, an elder tree, it's a very interesting tree. It's got a lot of uses. We can make teas from it, um, from the berries, not from the leaves. Um, in the autumn time with those lovely berries, you can even eat those and put them in fruits, uh, fruit puddings and things like that. Also, we can use this for making fire. Um, there's lots of really interesting, I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's some really interesting fungi that grow on elder trees that we can also um, sometimes eat. But anyway, stick back to the badgers. Elder trees are classic for badgers doing this. And you can see that tree, the trunk of it, is completely covered in scratch marks. Completely covered. You can see here, all over the base of this elder tree. And uh, there's a few reasons why people think that badgers have these scratch trees. Um, and uh, one, of the, one of the reasons I've read is because um, when they get up in the morning, they'll, uh, they want to stretch the tendons out on their hands. It's a bit like, you know, if you click your fingers and sometimes you can get a little bit of a pop. <laughs> and uh, it's a bit like that. Sometimes you wake up and you want to stretch. And that's one of the reasons they think they're doing this is to stretch. But also badgers are quite territorial. Uh, and they'll also, you maybe use this as a visual, a visual um, scent marking so other badgers around can see that there's a scent nearby but also they're probably depositing a little bit of scent on there and other badgers will come along and have a bit of a sniff 
and uh, and work out that there's some other badgers here. So yeah, they are quite territorial, although they're quite usually fairly friendly to each other. You know, um, they'll have their distinct boundaries and they can have disputes, but most of the time they're quite friendly animals. And that's perfect. And also elder trees, very, very classic for them to actually use an elder tree for that, not any other tree. So behind me, there's a big willow tree there. Um, they haven't done it on that. There's a big birch tree there. They haven't done it on that. They've done it on this elder tree. And, um, and elder trees are famous for being a little bit insecticidal. Um, so what I mean by that is um, the leaves have a chemical in them which, which uh, keeps insects and uh, sort of parasites at bay. And uh, maybe the badgers are so clever that they've worked out that if they do it on an elder tree, they maybe get some um, kind of uh, anti-insect repellent uh, on their on their fur. So that's one of the other reasons they'll do it. And uh, yeah, what else can I show you around here? I mean, that's that's most of it with the badger set. Um, so we've got to 25 minutes now, and we normally do about half an hour. Um, and I've really enjoyed looking at that badger set there. And I just wondered if anybody's got any other questions. Oh, I must cover the question about uh, how to see badgers. Now, at this time of year, um, in the winter time, badgers will still come out of their set um, but they don't come out as often as they might do in the spring and summer so they don't hibernate they don't sleep under there all winter they do come out but they maybe come out not every night you know if, particularly if there's a really cold um, few nights or if it's very snowy maybe very wet they might not come out because badgers are actually quite well adapted to not eating all the time they've got some good stores and uh, so yeah so the badgers Great time to see badgers is in the springtime because what happens is badgers normally come out at dusk. So they wait till the sun is going down until it's a little bit um, dusky and then they'll come out at that point. And uh, the springtime and summertime, obviously with the longer days, they get a much shorter night to be able to go out and do their foraging and build up all their stores for the winter. So they tend to come out a little bit earlier in the spring and summer than they do at winter. So if I was to sit and try and watch this set now, I might struggle to see them because they might wait till it's dark before they come out. But if it's springtime and autumn time, uh, summertime, sorry, and autumn, um, you, can, you can sit near a set um, before, so at dusk, before light, uh, before dark, and uh, you'll be able to possibly see them. And springtime's really good because the young badgers start getting quite um, boisterous and they start getting quite um, inquisitive about the world and they'll often come out long before dark. And um, I've sat and watched badgers many times where they'll, they'll um, the young ones will come out an hour or two before the, uh, before the adults and they'll play really local to the, mouth, the entrance of the set. They won't range too far. Um, and you can watch them and they're almost, they're very fearless. In fact, I've actually had a young badger walking to my leg once as I was sitting camouflage next to a tree. And the top tips for badger watching, things which are really um, worth knowing. If you want to see a badger, remember they have a very good sense of smell. So what I would suggest is if, you want, if I wanted to watch this set, I would come down in the afternoon and I would just take a little bit of notice of where the, um, where the wind is coming from. And chances are later that evening, it'll be coming from the same place. So today, you can see my breath disappearing off this way. The wind is going this way. So what I would do is I would position myself downwind of the badger. So it means that my scent's being carried off downwind and not towards them. That's the first thing you want to do. Remember I said that their eyesight isn't great, so you don't have to get full camouflaged up in green colors and you know build some kind of hide. What I normally do is just sit with my back to a tree and that just breaks up the outline of my body. Usually I wear greenish colors but it doesn't, you don't have to, it's not essential. And then uh, sit there and then just be very quiet. You have to be really quiet because if they do hear you, they'll scurry off. So take, I don't know if you could see me throughout that, but I was frantically trying to uh, work out how to get my camera and phone back working again. So sorry if, uh... anyway, I was just wrapping up. I was just, yeah, so basically I was just saying that's that's the best way to do it. So think of the wind, think of the um, your positioning, your colors, and uh, definitely encourage you to get out and see badgers. When I, often when I teach bushcraft courses, I talk to people, people often say, I've never seen a badger, I would love to see one. And what I would say is it's really simple. And uh, if you do know where there's a badger set, be careful not to disturb them too much. You know, you don't want to be um, looking around the sets and things in the evening, but um, they're usually very tolerant of human, humans anyway. So thank you very much for tuning in. Something a little bit different this week. And uh, if people enjoyed it, we'll try and do another nature walk next week. Maybe look at something a bit different. But uh, definitely encourage you to go out, look for animal tracks and uh, certainly look for badgers. Uh, can you do a video on natural cordage? So a couple of questions just before we head off. Um, 
yes, I'll do a video on natural cordage. The problem with it, uh, natural cordage at this time of year, it's quite difficult. It's um, right in the middle of when it's tricky to use plants and trees and barks. But uh, I'll rack my brains and I bet there's something I can find. And uh, I'll certainly show you, if I can, how to do some natural cordage. If there are any other shout outs, just before. Yeah, materials are a bummer. Yeah, at this time of year, it's a little bit tricky. We're right in the lull period between um, the autumn time and the spring where most of the materials are quite woody and not so useful for natural cordage. Um, but there's lots of other things we can do. How close would you recommend getting to badgers if you want to watch them? Um, well, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, consider ba badgers to be dangerous as such. You know, I don't think there's an issue. Um, they're normally very wary of humans. Um, any human interaction um, with badgers that's nasty is usually because there's a dog involved. Sometimes badgers and dogs can have a bit of a disagreement. Um, but I would say if you're sitting very quietly next to a tree um, and watching badgers, you'll be perfectly safe. And I normally sit about, um, I sit somewhere where I've got a good view with my binoculars. So I would say probably about 30 to 50 meters is normally about a good distance. Yeah, and if you've got the wind right, they won't be able to smell you. I'm just going to have a look at those messages that popped up. Um, and if I can, oh, I can, there we are. Can you shout out Audrey and Huxley in Somerset? Yes, I can. I mean, so you don't scare them away. Okay, sure, that question, yes, yeah, so hopefully I answered that. Um, 30 to 50 metres, as long as you get the wind right and you're very quiet, um, you won't scare them away. And actually, like I say, they're not, they don't have great eyesight, so um, you can often watch them and have no, no trouble at all. Um, it was so exciting. I hope you come to J Japan someday. I'd love to. Send me your send me your address. Um, thank you, Stephen. You're welcome. Right, I better uh, go just now because we've reached the 30 minutes. But I really hope you enjoyed that. And if you get a chance, and if you've got any other questions about badgers or anything sort of natural history related, don't be afraid to jump on our Instagram channel, Online Bushcraft. And um, I might not be able to answer them all, but I'll definitely do my best to help you get inspired and get outside. So have a good day, and I'm going to get my flask of tea out of the backpack and. Have a nice walk home. So thanks a lot. Bye bye.